Hello and welcome to Climbing Daily. If you're wondering where I am, make sure you keep watching throughout the week to find out. On today's show, we have an interview with Leo Holding, who's talking about his ascent of the mirror wall in Greenland and the film they made out of it. My name's Leo Holding. I'm a professional adventure climber. Um, I live in the Lake District in the UK and get to go to some pretty wild places fairly frequently. So the mirror wall is uh, quite unusual in that it's a very massive cliff. It's you know 1,200 meters tall, um, and it's in quite an obscure part of northeast Greenland. There aren't any other formations like that in the region. It appeals to me because I really, I always like mountains that stand out. You know, something that really is head and shoulders proud of everything else, the jewel in the crown. And the mirror wall is very much that. And it's also extremely steep. It's, it's like more than vertical. So it, it, it rises for 1,200 meters. And if you drop a stone off the top, it will land in the snow at the base of the wall without touching the wall. And it's called the mirror wall because it's so smooth and blank. It's, you know, it's like from a distance, it looks glass smooth. And even when you get up close, it's very sparsely featured and obviously therefore extremely difficult to climb. So yeah, it was about 30 pitches, but long pitches, uh, lots and lots of 50 meter, 60 meter rope lengths. And we ended up kind of, we wanted to go straight up the middle of the wall, but it's kind of a wall of two halves. The top half is granite, um, and there's some really nice features, some beautiful cracks and corners that split this giant head wall. But the bottom half is more gneiss, um, and it's really no continuous features, no continuous crack systems or corners. 15 days of climbing of which we spent 12 nights on the wall in two camps. So classic capsule style, we fixed about 300 meters of rope up to one camp, then pulled up all our stuff, <clears throat> spent a few days in that, and then got to another really sweet ledge system that we weren't expecting to find, which was awesome. It was like a harness off ledge. Pulled all our stuff up to there and then fixed from there to the top. It takes time to, to climb a route of that scale, um, and it, especially when you're trying to film it as well. Um, you know, it, it, that does affect things, not least of all, you've got an extra person there, so you've got all that extra stuff that's associated with that, uh, and the time and energy that you have to commit to, to filming stuff, which actually isn't that bad, um, as long as you don't on-site it. If you, if you don't climb the pitch first go, if you end up aiding it or cleaning it or resting on the road, filming's not a big issue because when you go for the red point ascent, you know, you send the camera up um, in between goes. The catch is if you do on site stuff, if you do it first go, then you only end up with bottom up shots, which are never that great. So you end up having to repeat stuff if you do on site it just for the camera. Um, but essentially, it's fatigue. When you're high on the cliff and you've been up there for 12 days and, you know, you start getting pretty battered, your hands get really sore, and then you've got to reel in the level of risk. You can't be taking massive falls and smashing into the cliff. Relatively minor issues, broken ankles, can can be quite serious. Thankfully, the upper half of the mirror wall was just like unbelievably good. I, I don't know, you can see in the film, it's just splitter cracks. Hard, steep, but safe, and really, really good quality. Like 15 pitches in a row of three star classic climbing. It was so good. For me, in some ways, you know, anticlimax is a strong word, but, you know, as soon as I got to the top, I'd start thinking about the descent and how we're going to get down with all the stuff. In a strange way, I think the highlight of the trip for me was a couple of days before we topped out, we did this, I led this quite hard aid pitch that, you know, was really, was really amazing. If you're into aid climbing, which I'm not really, but, uh, it, you know, it was like the shield head wall. It's a millimeter wide bird beak crack. Well, that didn't go quite as hoped. I managed to get across the blank section just using six rivets, and I got to the feature, which we've been aiming for, but unfortunately, it wasn't the hand crack we were hoping for, which is fast and easy. It's an aid seam, which means it's slow and hard. It took me about six hours to do a 50 meter pitch. You used 50 pieces of gear in the pitch, 
And at the end of it, the angle eased a bit to like vertical and the cracks got wider and you could basically see this one crack went all the way to the top of the wall. So I kind of knew it was in the bag at that stage. And in a way that I kind of got the sensation of, of the summit a bit lower down, you know, the, the joy. I knew we were going to do it at that point. Um, but still getting to the top is, is cool. And, uh, and especially getting up there with all the other guys who'd not really done anything like that before. It was a trip, it was snowing upwards and you know, there's nobody in any direction for 200 miles. So it's, I love that, being up there, and self-reliant on your own, it's a beautiful place. Fundamentally, this was the first big expedition I've done as a dad. Um, I've got two kids now. Uh, last year when we went to the Mirror Wall, I had one two-year-old daughter. We've just had another little boy. Um, so yeah, obviously when you've got dependents, when you're a parent, uh, high-risk games and adventures have more at stake. There's somebody else uh, that's kind of involved in the game. And also, you know, this is a, something that we explore in the film. Um, Combined with the fact that one of my best mates and best climbing partners, Sean Leary, Stanley, uh, he died in a wingsuit flying accident two years ago. And he was like my main climbing partner that I did all kinds of stuff with. Um, and his wife was heavily pregnant when he died. So he basically did the ultimate mistake of going and killing himself and leaving a, a widow and a fatherless child. You know, I, I had another crazy experience last year where, long story cut short, I almost died in a plane crash. The uh, Malaysian Airlines MH17 on the 17th of July 2014. I literally had a reservation on that plane. Uh, I didn't get it because I ended up going out on the trip a bit earlier. Um, so that was like a really near miss in the classics of getting run over by a bus type way. Uh, and in a strange way, that got me psyched again on, you know, definitely not proximity flying. That's a, that's a step too far. But, um, but climbing big walls and, and relatively safe big climbing objectives is is a risk that I am willing to take even with a family uh, but you know definitely with a with a higher degree of safety and perhaps a little bit less recklessness than than in the past You can see our adventure at mirrorwallfilm.com. It's on YouTube, Mirror Wall Film. And yeah, it's really good. I'd like to big up Matt Pycroft and the Cold House Collective, who've done an amazing job. It's really quite an emotional and very beautiful film. Enjoy. It's also free, so you're going to like that. <laughs> free to watch. Cheers, Leo. If you want to watch the film, make sure you click the link below. See you guys soon. <laughs>